Hello Pelican Sound, this is Eric Long, your general manager. Today we are going to go over the reopening strategy. Uh, a lot of things have been considered uh, in the criteria. We're looking at our data, we're looking at recommendations from our CDC, Florida Department of Health, government and state and local. We're also looking at our industry uh, as far as our clubs and what else everybody else is doing at this point in time. And we're going to look at a gradual and specific process. And we're also going to look at monitoring and reporting uh, any cases. And at, at this point in time, we still have some good news that we have no new cases within Pelican Sound. And I'll move on uh, through the slides. So how are we going to open? Uh, we're going to look at all of our amenities and we're going to open in phases. Phase one, we're looking at golf and pools. Phase two, our racket sports. Phase three, bocce and administrative offices. Phase four, fitness and restaurant. And again, we're going to look at, based off the, the lift of the government restrictions as far as our executive order, we're also going to look at all the details as far as data as it comes in. And we're going to take special precautions uh, to ensure uh, personal protective equipment. And obviously, we're going to increase our cleaning and sanitation throughout the property. And our objective is to create a safe, effective, and focused strategy for reopening. The plan is to implement a gradual process in which the various aspects of our operation can open in several phases over time. So what does contact tracing mean? Uh, this is something that's starting to uh, be more prevalent in the area. So if someone was infected with uh, COVID-19, uh, the idea is to be able to find out who you've been in contact during those times and um, possibly get them tested as well, even if the conditions haven't started. So this is something we're going to be focusing on, and I think it's going to be uh, really of a game changer in making sure we can control um, the areas of when something like uh, an, somebody gets infected and how we can go about it. Uh, Lee Health locally is getting results back within 24 hours because uh, they're testing in-house. So these are great positive things moving forward. So we'll continue to update on uh, contact tracing and how it go, go about it. So today's uh, presentation was organized with in coordination with our committees and based upon the recommendations input and their support. So here's our projected timeline for re reopening the amenities. Now, take uh, in consideration these dates are tentative and subject to change based on governmental restrictions or any changes in the COVID-19 pandemic. But the plan is right now uh, to open on April 25th our golf course uh, with obviously restrictions and our pool operation. And then moving forward, we would open on May, uh, May 1st our racket sports. And then May 19th, we're looking to open the bocce, watercraft, and administration offices. And still to be determined will be the fitness and restaurants. Again, these are based off government restrictions and recommendations. Obviously, the fitness center and the in restaurants uh, may have some more restrictions. And once they become available, we'll update this. So we're looking at a four-phase approach at this time. So phase one is on April 25th. So for golf, uh, we are going to continue with the split, split golf uh, maintenance crew until further notice. The pro shop hours will be seven to two o'clock. Now understand if you need uh, something inside the pro shop, uh, you can make an appointment and get any of your items, but we will still keep the pro shop uh, doors locked at this point in time. Uh, we're gonna work with straight tee time starting at 8 a.m. on the A course. And at the nine holes, uh, we're going to have on the C course starting at 11 a.m. Understand we still have the maintenance crews out there that need to be able to get the course uh, ready for play. Uh, we're going to start with 10-minute intervals, uh, single ride only, uh, expect, except for spouses. Uh, walking will uh, be allowed after 4 o'clock. Uh, the driving rain, putting green, and chipping green, we're going to close this and uh, we're going to implement this on phase two. Um, we're going to, uh, the golf carts will be staged in the morning, uh, similar to what we had uh, previously to our closure. And then you'll be returning the, uh, the carts, uh, if it was the club carts, into the uh, parking lot near the administrative building and we'll clean and sanitize the carts. We'll ask that the carts be back uh, by 5.30 so we can allow enough time for cleaning. And during this time, we're going to not allow uh, outside guests 
until further notice. And we will practice uh, the same practices we've had. So we're going to uh, refrain from any uh, leisure walking during this time now that uh, golf will be uh, continuing to play. So our pool operation, uh, we'll open the pools from nine to dusk. Uh, all pools uh, will be open, but understand it's for swimming only. Uh, no lounging until further notice. Uh, maximum uh, 60 minutes of pool usage uh, per, per day. And the pool capacity for Island Sound and River Club will be 15. That's inside the pool and in the surrounding areas. Uh, pool capacity on the other pools will be 10. So right now we're going to just concentrate on swimming. Uh, no lounging at this point in time. Uh, spa capacity will be 2 and a maximum of 15 minutes of spa usage. And again, outside guests will not be allowed until further notice. So phase two is uh, May 1st. So as far as tennis, uh, we will have no furniture under the patio and shaded area. Uh, we will discontinue the use of the ice and water station. So we'll ask you to bring your own water. Courts available uh, will be on our mobile app or website. Uh, we'll have four courts, one courts one, four, five, and eight, uh, only four players per court. Uh, court usage will be limited to 60 minutes, and you'll be able to do this uh, booking uh, one court per day. Uh, courts will be assigned and posted uh, outside the pro shop. Uh, all scoreboards will be removed, and uh, you'll be able to take lessons by appointment on 30-minute intervals. Again, this is making sure that uh, we aren't utilizing the court, so if there's a court available, that's when that appointment will be booked. And the pro shop will have the seven to one hours, Monday through Friday. Understand the doors will be locked, but it will be accessed by appointment only. So as far as pickleball, uh, we'll have uh, similar practices as far as no furniture available at this time. The ice and water station will ask you to bring your own water. Courts will be available on reservation only. Uh, singles only for two members per court. Court usage will be limited to 30 minutes. Uh, each member will be uh, on the court sheet, and you'll see that outside of the pro shop. Only four courts will be utilized, courts one, four, five, and eight. Again, we'll supply some sanitizer. Uh, lessons will be available on a 30-minute increments, and again, we'll make sure that there's no courts that will be uh, requested at that time, so it's only going to be when it's available. And the pro shop hours, again, will be 7 to 1, Monday through Friday, and you'll be able to uh, make an appointment to get anything inside the uh, pro shop. So phase three is May 19th. So our uh, phase three is uh, our bocce courts. So we're gonna utilize courts one, three, and five. Uh, you will have to make your booking on the mobile app or website. Uh, players may enter on the courts uh, at their time of reservation and no more than four players per court, two players on each side. Uh, it is recommended uh, because this is more of a contact uh, sport that we ask you to, uh, if you'd like to, you can wear a mask, uh, bring your own water. We will provide hand sanitizer. The scoreboards and bocce balls we asked uh, during or before and after play that you sanitize the, uh, the balls. Uh, we'll have sanitizer down there. And you can groom the courts, but please wipe down uh, with sanitizer sanitizer afterwards and uh, you will be able to bring your own chairs but understand um, please keep your social distancing so our watercraft uh, this uh, is about our kayaks canoes paddle boards uh, we're going to ask that you still make reservations via the mobile app or website and you must pick uh, the keys up at the corkscrew gate so we're going back to the uh, summer hours uh, hand sanitizer will be available, and we ask that you use it before and after use. Upon returning uh, your paddle boards, please wipe down all those items. And staff will sanitize all the paddles uh, prior uh, to you going out. Uh, and then please make sure you bring back the keys back to Corkscrew Gate. In our administrative offices, again, this is mid-May when we're opening back up, but we're talking about Tuesday through Friday, 9 to 4. Uh, again, all meetings will still continue via GoToMeeting. Uh, this will be for all the committees and any other uh, uh, activities that we have. It will be all through GoToMeeting. And we're going to ask that you uh, practice social distancing uh, when you need to be able to utilize the office. And uh, please call for assistance and we'll be able to access any of your information. And we'll still keep the payment box outside, 
near the restrooms beside the administrative building. And now we're getting into phase four. This is going to be to be determined. Again, we're going to rely on some government uh, restrictions and data to be able to roll out uh, phase four. But we want to kind of give you an idea of what we're thinking about, and we can roll this out as well. So our fitness center, again, we're going to rely on some of the data that's coming out in the next couple of weeks. But I want to kind of give you an idea of what we're thinking about. And we're going to kind of uh, get with the committee and kind of get up some ideas. But for right now, we're thinking that the fitness center would be open 5 to 10. Again, we're going to require 6 to 8 feet apart. Uh, we'll have to space out some of the cardio equipment and maximum capacity of no more than 20. And our fitness capacity is about 15. Again, we're not going to allow guests at this point in time, and we'll make uh, requests for appointments as far as any of the classes. So I think what, what our first approach will be with fitness is maybe we'll have some outdoor classes, and maybe we can start that up in uh, mid-May. So maybe that's our first approach, and then moving forward, we'll give you some more details, but thank you very much. And as far as restaurants, again, this is going to be kind of a, another kind of wait and see kind of thing. But uh, we're going to probably uh, still have, obviously, our operations will be closed on Monday starting in May. Uh, we'll have lunch service uh, Tuesday through Sunday, dinner service uh, three nights a week. And uh, we'll plan on that being in the uh, pub and Vista. We're going to probably have similar uh, capacities of what are the restrictions were in the past where it was 50 percent capacity. Again, we'll have disposable menus. Uh, we're going to continue with the curbside pickup. And at this point, we're going to have uh, no guests at this point in time. Again, we're going to look at the future on this. Uh, as far as reciprocal season, where that's going to stand, I would think this is something more in the lines of June, July, kind of looking at that. But for the month of May, you know, we're really going to rely on uh, first the takeout. And we'll kind of ramp up that as well and making sure that we have many offerings and continue to update the menus but we'll kind of hold off on any more details on this but uh, this is kind of where we stand right now so sound learnings just met uh, the committee just met recently and they were kind of talking about the game plan for next season and possibly some uh, activities that we can add this summer and we're really looking at uh, some of the youtube streaming or similar to what we're giving right now this powerpoint presentation with voiceovers so we're going to really look at this moving forward and what we can do for the fall. Uh, again, as far as what we can do as far as classes, um, inside classes really at this point in time don't make sense. And we'll have to really rely on what we can do. But a lot of this virtual type of classes we might be able to offer. So stay tuned for more. So the roadmap to the new normal. Uh, it's going to be right now we're going to just be safe and measured uh, our reopening strategy. In the short term, we're going to evaluate, monitor, and transition. So when things uh, we can change and update, we'll be able to do that. And we're going to make sure we can monitor it and make sure that it's effective and it's long term. So what are we going to be doing long term? Uh, we're going to create a sustainable new normal. Again, this is something that we're going to have to evaluate over time. But this is something that uh, it's not going away. And we need to prepare and make uh, the most sense of what we're going to do. As far as what our owner's responsibility, uh, we must continue to honor safe and social distancing recommending across all amenities. While amenities are gradually reopening, the risk of exposure to the virus will continue, including those fellow participants who may be uh, asymptomatic. Making the decision to participate in various amenities based on your own personal comfort level. Participants are asked to self-monitor and be sensitive to, to the concerns of others. So thank you for listening in today. I hope this was uh, informative and you understand what we are expecting uh, moving forward. Again, this is something that uh, we're looking forward to reopening and it's very uh, important that we do it in phases and it's a, it's a really good approach, I believe. And uh, thank you very much for all your thoughts during these times and I appreciate all your efforts and uh, look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you very much, Pelican Sound.